A viewer called Killian He Knew sent me this question. If you boil alcohol in an electric kettle, will it ever turn itself off? It's an interesting question, isn't it? Because electric kettles turn off automatically when water reaches boiling point. But alcohol, specifically the chemical ethanol, has a lower boiling point than water. So my prediction is that a kettle full of ethanol will not turn off automatically. It will boil dry because that mechanism that turns the kettle off automatically would never kick in because it's based on temperature. We could just assume that that's what will happen, but let's go through the motions of proving me right. We'll start off with vodka, and you'll notice I'm doing this outside. That's because ethanol vapor can be dangerous. I don't recommend trying this at home, but if you do, do it outside. Vodka is about 40% ethanol, 60% water. So what's the boiling point of that mixture? Well, water's boiling point is 100 C, which you might know as 212 F, and the boiling point of ethanol is 78 C. So you might think that when the solution reaches 78 C, the ethanol will start to boil, leaving the water behind, but that's actually not quite what happens. Instead, the mixture has a boiling point that's somewhere between 100C and 78C. In this case, it's about 83C. And it does look as if the kettle's just going to continue boiling. Oh. Well, that does seem to prove me wrong. Or does it? Crucially, when a 40-60 mix of ethanol and water boils, the vapor it produces is not in that same ratio. Instead, it's in a ratio of about 80% ethanol to 20% water. In other words, as it boils, the concentration of ethanol in the liquid that remains is going down. The liquid that remains is getting closer to pure water, and so the boiling point is getting closer to 100 C. And it must be then that the concentration reaches a point that actually turns the kettle off. Let's do a taste test and see. Well, it's weird because it's warm. It's definitely alcoholic, but it's definitely not as strong as neat vodka. So I'd say a lot of the alcohol has disappeared from there. So I haven't been proven wrong yet. Let's try pure alcohol or 99% ethanol. That's the best that I could do. Let's see what happens. Wow, that is surprising. Damn. That's surprising. That turned off quicker than the vodka. That's really surprising. So clearly my prediction was wrong. And at this point you might be formulating an explanation for why that goes like this. The boiling point of ethanol is 78 C. So eventually it reaches that temperature and starts to boil, but the kettle stays on. So the temperature of the liquid continues to increase until it reaches 100 C, and that's when the kettle turns off. But that's actually not how boiling works. Interestingly, when you boil a liquid, you then can't physically get it any hotter than that. Like, you put a pot of water on the stove to boil, and it reaches 100 C, and you think, well, I'll turn up the stove to get it even hotter than 100 C. But it doesn't work. What happens is, once a liquid is boiling, all the energy that you put into the liquid goes into turning that liquid into a gas. It goes into the phase transition, and none of the energy goes into increasing the temperature. In other words, if you turn up the burner on your stove, you don't increase the temperature, you just make it boil quicker. As a side note, that's why a good way to melt chocolate is to put it in a bowl over boiling water because then you know it's never gonna get above 100 degrees C, you're not gonna damage the chocolate. So what's going on with this kettle? I decided to dig into the workings of it a bit more. There's a switch here, and this switch will stay closed so long as the kettle is in its base, which I'm faking here by pressing this piece of metal into the contact point where there's a little button. But watch what happens. When I heat up this metal disc here, the disc buckles, which forces the switch back open, which I assume was being held in place by a magnet. So this disc must be a bimetallic strip. Two different metals fused together 
that expand at different rates as the temperature changes. That causes the disc to buckle. But the disc is down in the base of the kettle where it's dry and relatively cool. So how does it work? Well, look, at the top you can see there's this tube and the tube runs down into the base and under here, and look, it exits out across that metal disc. Just to prove that, look, if I pour water into the hole at the top, it comes out the bottom there. Which, by the way, explains something I found really confusing in this footage. What is this liquid doing down here? Where did it come from? Well, you can see the bubbling liquid very easily reaches the opening of that tube, and a lot of it must be pouring down and coming out. So what's the purpose of this design? Well, it's actually really clever because it detects the presence of boiling in general, not a specific temperature. Like you could have a liquid in there that's at 100 degrees, but if it's not boiling, then it's not producing vapor and there's no pressure to force that vapor down the tube to the bimetallic strip. The crucial thing is that at whatever temperature, if the liquid in the kettle is boiling, it will produce a vapor that will increase the pressure inside the kettle, forcing that vapor over the bimetallic strip. And the manufacturers of this kettle have clearly chosen a trigger temperature for that bimetallic strip that is significantly lower than the boiling point of water. And actually that makes sense because well, we say that water boils at 100 C, but that's only true at atmospheric pressure at sea level. Like if I took a kettle that worked according to my hypothesis and went up a mountain with it, it would never turn off. It would boil dry because at higher altitudes where the pressure is lower, the boiling point of water is also lower. So here we have a kettle that works at many altitudes. So it's a really clever design, but then I thought, Hold on, maybe there's a way to rescue my prediction because I've got another kettle that doesn't have that tube thing in it. So how does that work? Well, looking inside, there's this component here that's touching the base of the kettle. And if you look, there's actually some thermal paste between the two. So clearly the manufacturer wants there to be a good thermal connection between the two. This must be the thermal switch. So surely this will switch at about 100 C, meaning this ethanol should simply boil dry. Let's see what happens. Damn, damn, I'm just wrong. It's weird though, because I just don't understand how this kettle works. It doesn't make sense to me because surely if this little kettle is able to bring water to the boil, this thermal switch can't shut off before 100C. And yet it seems to be. You know, one possibility is that, well, you know, water is a good heat sink because it's a good conductor of heat and it has a high heat capacity. So maybe the water inside the kettle is able to maintain this piece of metal beneath it at under 100 degrees C, so long as the water is under 100 degrees C. And so the metal will only reach 100 degrees C when the water reaches 100 degrees C because it's such a good heat sink. Whereas the ethanol, which isn't such a good heat sink, while the ethanol itself would never get above 78 C, it doesn't have the heat sinking abilities to maintain the metal beneath it at that temperature. And so the, the metal base is able to eventually reach 100 degrees C because of the heating elements around it. Yeah, it's a funny one though, isn't it? So I was about to do this bit about how the differing mechanisms in these two kettles cause them to behave differently when they're operated with the lids off. So with the lid off this kettle, all the vapor escapes. There's no buildup of pressure forcing the vapor down the tube. And so this won't switch itself off when the lid is off. Whereas this one, because it's thermally coupled to the metal base, it will turn itself off even when the lid is open. But then I set it up and this flipping kettle just kept boiling. It didn't turn off when the lid was open, but it did when the lid was closed. So, I mean, what's going on? I did a bit of investigating. Look, in here, there's a little hole um, look, there. So the steam goes through that hole, through the handle and into the base where the bimetallic strip is. 
But that's confusing. Why have they thermally coupled it to the base? Maybe it's a safety thing, like to, in case it boils dry or something. I don't know, but it's, it's definitely how it works because I covered it up the hole with some like water resistant tape and it just kept boiling even with the lid closed. So there you go. This has been an interesting video. It's been an exercise in me being wrong about stuff, which is fun because, you know, I like trying new things and, uh, well, I've never been wrong about anything before. I don't get as much time to watch documentaries as I would like to, which is why I appreciate the sponsor of this video. Curiosity Stream is like Netflix for nerds. And in that sense, it's different to YouTube because it's a curated experience. Someone who knows what they're doing has handpicked these documentaries and films for people like you and me. And just like Netflix, you can browse categories. So if you want to watch something on science or technology or history, whatever you fancy at that moment. They also have collections which are really interesting, like their award-winning originals collection. There's a couple of collections that I've been watching a lot of recently. The first is the Feel Good Films collection. It's nice to know that I can watch the documentary and I'll feel good at the end and I'll have learned something as well. The other collection I've watched a lot of is the 4K collection because I want to make use of my nice new TV. Something else I've found surprisingly useful is browsing by duration. You know, I rarely have that much time to watch something, so it's good to be able to see, look, these are all the things that they have that are under 20 minutes. Curiosity Stream is available on desktop and mobile, of course, but it's also available on smart TVs as well. The promo on this one is really good. If you go to curiositystream.com forward slash Steve Mould, you'll get a whole year of Curiosity Stream for just $14.99. The link's also in the description. So check out Curiosity Stream today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit subscribe and the algorithm thinks you'll enjoy this video next. <laughs>